Hello, my name is Nakuri. I'm from Costa Rica, a small country in Central America, in the middle of this enormous continent. And I'm a journalist, but I'm also an MC, a rapper, uh, a singer. And I also do a lot of community work because uh, I love it. The funny thing is that when, when I learn about hip hop and when I start connecting with this hip hop community, I didn't even know the name of it. I just felt the vibe. Hip hop was the only alternative I had. I mean, even though I come from a, a family, well, I, I just grew up with my mom. She was a single mom. And we grew up in a, in a barrio that was very, very close, an area uh, that was like very, uh, very violent. And, you know, hip hop was in the streets. People was just hearing that music, dancing that movement, uh, doing some graffiti art. It's so powerful because it's so easy to access. The fact that hip hop came from migrant people, from African people was amazing because it also connected us to our roots, to our past, to our history. And that was amazing. And also the fact that in these moments that we were dancing or we were singing or whatever, we had time to talk about what was going on in our daily lives. And then we realized that we have similar concerns, similar needs. Suddenly we could connect uh, all these needs and start thinking about how we can um, work those needs you know and how do you use hip-hop um in work in your workshops for example to spark these conversations with communities well the interesting and beautiful thing about hip-hop is that it's so attractive what i start doing is a, a rap workshop for example and we start singing about um i start teaching a little bit about you know what does it mean in poetry what is rhythm and how we combine both and also about the concept how we can share as a community what we think through these tools and then suddenly you start seeing how people start talking about what they live in their daily life and they start talking about you don't even, you don't even have to ask them and it's the same if it's in Costa Rica or if it's in England, you know? It's like, okay, suddenly you start seeing how people talk about what they feel, what concerns them, what makes them happy, what they, makes them sad. And it becomes a sense, uh, a very, very nice place because it's like a place for um, sens sensibility, a place for, for just showing their true self and sharing it with another people and to be heard. And it, it becomes also like a therapy. Like six months ago, I was doing a, a workshop in the woman's jail here in Costa Rica. And it was amazing to see, first of all, this amazing poets. And I was like, oh, wow. I mean. I haven't seen like this quality of poetry since a long, long time ago. It was amazing. And then them speaking about their reality from their point of view, because you know, society sometimes is very punitive. It's like, oh, these people is there because they deserve it and justice is gonna change their life. But the reality is that their stories are way more complicated and diverse and have so many different layers that need to be heard. And I also wanted to ask, have you ever actually performed at a protest or a manifestation or as part of a protest? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Suddenly you receive a WhatsApp and it's like, okay, tomorrow we're going to make an event in front of the parliament and we're going to speak about what's going on with a mind that wants to go to a community and pollute the water and then you go 
it's from one day to the other. And then you go to the place and there is suddenly 300, 500 people there. And there is also somebody that brought a sound system, a microphone, and you see the biggest artist in Costa Rica, they're there. Speaking, saying uh, words, but also singing and making people uh, happy in a tough place, you know, because we had to learn how to fight with happiness, Re rebel happiness, you know? It's like, okay, you, all these people want to, all these business people want to take out the real richness of our community. We're not just gonna be sad. We're not just gonna be depressed. We're gonna be singing. We're gonna put up the joy and with that joy, we're gonna keep on fighting and we're gonna be keep on talking about what's going on. And you know who we learned that from? From the native uh, populations here in Costa Rica. That's the way they have been fighting this 500 years that had passed defending nature defending language, defending culture, defending traditions, defending history, you know? How important is the role of musicians um, as social organizers in Latin America? So yeah, musicians have a, a big role in these social issues because we are, through the senses, waking up the feelings of a lot of people that sometimes are dormant. And we're not necessarily the activists that are doing the most because there are a lot of unknown activists that we have to remember them and we have to acknowledge them. The fact that an artist is not thinking only about the commercial issues and is stuck, uh, thinking about the social issues and are speaking about that and are gathering people and are inspiring people to do something something about it, it's very powerful. And it's making a real change in our society. So I think that the fact that we also have a big fan base and that we speak about this and that our fan base also get to have this information from us and can share it to their immediate network change a lot of things in our society. And it's the way we have found to make it. Because here in our countries, uh, getting to have information is difficult. Now, uh, even more difficult when all these uh, newspapers, uh, if you want to receive the information, you have to pay. And not many people can pay through internet and not many people can even pay because they don't have the money. So we as an artist, sometimes we get to have the information, we make a screenshot and we put it in our social media so people can read what's going on. Because many, many times that inaction of people is because they don't even know what's going on.